every eye closed in the house this morning. How many believes that God can move? Amen. Amen. Let us pray this morning. Precious Heavenly Father, I come before you knowing that God today, Lord, before we woke up, before our feet hit the floor, God, before we even ate breakfast this morning, you knew already of all this hill, God, and every church in our community that God, Lord, what person was going to be here today. And God, I believe that this morning, thank God for these hands that were lifted, God, that says, I know of somebody that needs a touch. I know somebody that's going through cancer. I know somebody that needs a move of God in their life. I pray this morning, Lord, over the loss that's in our families or in our community this morning. But God, I pray this morning, Lord, for Carolyn's mom, asking for a touch upon that body. I pray, Lord, for the Puckett family, knowing that God this loss. Uh, Lord, nobody, Lord, this week, God, uh, Lord, uh, with friends, Uncle Danny, God, Lord, I know that nobody wants to say goodbye. And Father, this morning, Lord, I come before you over our church family. I am thankful for our church family. And I pray over our church family this morning. And I pray over our community and our schools and our nation this morning. Asking that God that your hand be upon them. And this morning, Lord, I pray today, God, believing for Punky and Becky this morning. God, I know that, Lord, that we've been praying and we're going to pray without ceasing, God. To believe that God, your will, your fingerprint is going to be done in this life, God. I believe that God, that Lord, before Becky and Puggy ever pull out of the driveway, God, your presence will be in Rona, God. I believe, Lord, before the doctors even speak to Puggy, that God, your presence will be surrounded. So, God, today we're going to believe that today, God, your will will be done. So, Father, we as a church today, we desire your move of the Holy Spirit, not only on these needs, but in this house today. And we ask all these things in your mighty and holy, wonderful name. Amen. Give God praise in the house.
No, I ain't the same prodigal return. All my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. I'm no stranger to the prison. I've worn shackles and chains. But I've been freed and forgiven. And I'm not going back. I'll never be the same. Oh, Thank God my yesterday's song. All my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by the blood. Now I'm no stranger to
I want us to worship you and praise you. I want us to magnify your name. God, at the midnight hour, I want to cry out Jesus. Because, God, that the enemies are surrounding me and I cry out Jesus, they can't stand the name of Jesus. So, Father, this morning I ask that you anoint this vessel, you anoint the ears this morning, and that your will will be done. We as a church, let repeat this. I. I. Come on, church, be bold this morning. I. I. Will. Will. Receive. Receive. The Word of God. The Word of God. Today. Today. Give God praise in the house. Give this word to put in the hand this morning. that say amen. 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 <clears throat> Miss Darlene, she is my best friend in the whole wide world. Look here. When y'all don't want to say amen, look here. I'm going to even spell it out for you, all right? Kenny, I need to give you one of these. Uh, okay. You won't wear it when you preach. I hear, yeah, you can just point yourself. But girl that went to Boyd's Chapel that, you know, before I ever met Fran, I really had a big crush on her. And so one night we go down to the park to play volleyball, and Fran's across the creek, bowling like a hot. <laughs> she could cross the bridge over to where we were playing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you, darling. You, this is for you. Real good. But no, she don't do that. I told this guy. I said, Let me tell you what happened. We get done playing volleyball, I'll ride up to my house, which ain't but probably a mile. It may not even be a mile, maybe, Kenny. But we get to my house and she's bowling mad. Oh, I see what you's doing over there. Yeah, I see what you love. I'm with you. You are at my house. I'm not with her. Oh, it wasn't no telling her that. So 45 minutes here, I'm doing crawl Huh? <laughs> I told this guy, I said, I'll never forget this as long as I live. I take her home, I come back, Mom said, what are you doing? They make women every day. What are you doing? I was like, I know, but I love her. Yeah, anyway. Nobody, see, everybody got quiet there, didn't they? See, at the end of the day, what you love, nobody can, nobody can change that. That's right. Nobody can change that. It doesn't matter what anybody says. If you love someone, listen, we have Nellie here today. If Punky was able to be here, I would have him testify. Listen, I would have him testify. He would tell Nellie, do not marry him. I mean, get near him. He's trouble. It didn't matter. Why? Because Nellie loved Kenny. Kenny, I don't need nothing from you on this one right now. Because I fear Kenny's going to go, amen? But, but you got to understand that, that what you love, somebody else may not love. What you believe in, somebody else may not believe. I think about, I, I, I really think about Chris Brewster when he, when he did what he did and the mothers in the waiting room praying and seeking God. Doctors coming in wondering, is he going to make it? She's replied, my God is in control. I love my God. He will be there for my child. It's her child today. Sing for the Lord. Yeah, he ain't got a pretty face, but his voice, he makes a joyful noise. How'd that happen? It was all God. But somebody had to believe. See, folks, today, when we read about our, when you think about your relationships, you got to understand that our relationships that we have in this life, how many of you all have not forgave people? Mm. Yeah. Come on. How many people have you wrote off, said, I'm not dealing with this person ever again? If that person comes to this church, I'm going to leave. I can't be in the... Well, if they get to heaven, what you going to do then? <laughs> you going to go to St. Peter and go, hey, I don't know how they got here, but it's either me or them. <laughs> you think that's going to work? You're probably not going to get through the gate. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Why? Because it's in your heart. Amen. It's in your heart. Let me read you something here. It says, God invites Hosea to dive into God's own heart by entering into a relationship which he knows will be <laughs> unreciprocal. God wants Hosea to love someone, not just marry them, but love them in the knowledge that his love will not be returned. 
How many of us today want to love something that don't love you back? I mean, I got no amen to me. Can this up to help y'all a little bit? <laughs> Nobody wants to be in a relationship like that. I love, there's a movie that I watch every now and then. It's, um, it's Almighty, not Almighty, uh, with, uh, oh, I can't the name of it now. But anyway, huh? No, I don't know. Uh, no. <coughs> but they, the guy plays Ace Ventura. Yeah, Bruce Almighty. Yeah. No, no, it's not. It's different. Uh, anyway, anyway, in the story, God comes down. God comes down. They're walking on the water. And God says, okay, today I'm going to let you be me for 24 hours. I want you to solve all the problems. I love this movie. So he says, okay, this thing's easy enough for me. I can do that. He says, okay, here's what we're going to do. He says, but here's the thing. You can't force nobody to love you. He goes, well, why can't I do that? He said, I don't understand. Why won't they love me? He said, if you can figure that out, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> you say, what do you mean? How many of us today would sacrifice what God sacrificed and people didn't love you, would you still love them today? Mm. Would you still be there for them? Get quiet in the church. I want you to look back and Chapter 3 of Hosea. Then we're going to go over somewhere else right here in just a second. It says in chapter 3, verse 1, Then said the Lord, I read this last week, Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman, beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of the Lord towards the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love, like as wine. So I bought her, brought her, brought her to me for 15 pieces of silver, and for a homer of barley and a half homer of barley. And I said to her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot, and thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. I want you to turn all the way over, if you will, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. As you're turning there, I want you to picture this. You married this woman. She went out on you. Went with and been with other men. Other men. She had basically walked away from the children that she had because she wanted to be with other men. She didn't want to love you. And all of a sudden, God says, I want you to go buy her back. How many in the United States of America today is going to tell a husband or wife when they have committed adultery, you're going to tell their wife, you know what I think y'all think? I think you ought to go back and ask for her to come back. There ain't nobody going to do that. Right? <laughs> ain't nobody going to do that. But uh, you've got to understand why, what the story is about. It's about Israel. You've got to understand they're walking away from God. They're not walking. Listen, they, they love the benefits. <coughs> How many loves the benefits of God? Say amen in the house. Yeah. How many loves to have a friend when ain't no friend in the room? We all love that. But here we find, he says, I want you to do this. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says this. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The first thing I want to tell you about in your relationship, if you truly love God, your past is the history. If you gave your life to God and you did what we did about three or four weeks ago when me and Fran, I took her ring off and I, well, I couldn't take it off, but when I went to go put it back on and we did our rings to say we were married, that day when I married her, everything that's in the past is gone. When you ask God to come into your life, it's gone. You ask God to save you. You ask God to change your life. You became a new creature. You've heard Kenny get up here and preach several Sundays and say, hey, listen, when I got saved, God changed me. He removed things. I'm a new person. But listen, in your relationship, when you first got married, how much did you love your wife? Nobody going to say anything to him. Why? Honey, I love you. <laughs> Nobody. How many remembers the day that when you come back from your honeymoon and you were like, ooh, man, I am so 
happiest man in the world. Our honeymoon was at Comfort Inn up in Bluefield. Can I get an amen in the house? <laughs> but listen, you fell in love. Listen, it says you become a new creature. You become something new. Hosea says, I'm going to buy you. He buys her back. He says, now you're going to buy me for many years. See, the problem in the church today is we don't want to love the broken. Mm. We don't want to forgive the broken. Mm. We don't want to forgive the woman who went out and committed adultery and walked away from her family. We don't want to love that person no more. We want to judge her. Listen, our job is not to judge. Our job is to pray, to love, to encourage. Amen. It's easy to point a finger. Me and Lawrence, when we did the funeral for Danny, Lawrence talked about it more than I did. But Lawrence said, I remember living next door to Danny. Now see, the story that I told was when I first married Fred, I may not, I may not yeah, I had the first time when I married her, Danny gets me in his truck, takes me up Stony Ridge. I'm not lying. I thought I was going to die. I really did. I thought France put me in here just to see how much I love her. And y'all got to know who Danny is. Danny is, I mean, if you didn't know him, I mean, Mike's laughing because he knows it's true. He'd slide around curves. And I'm like, you know, I'm almost screaming. And he's, he's slapping the whole time. The Lord tells his story and he says, he said, you know, he said, he said, Keith, I remember one time we were playing. Danny comes out yelling and hollering and hollering your name. He said, man, I took off. <laughs> I got in the house. He's like, Lord, you just like to be with them boys. I don't think they're going to make it. <laughs> That's just who he was. He got mad. He got angry. See, we, we in our life today, we forget that when we were broken, somebody still had to love us. Mm. Amen. When, listen, listen, what she was doing was wrong. But at the end of the day, where's, what's our church supposed to be? See, if I'm in a relationship with God, what should my walk be? Mm. Should my walk be the same? Yeah. Shouldn't it be, I want to be like Christ? Am I perfect at it? No, I ain't. This week, I ain't going to lie to you, I prayed for two trucks and I thought, God... I don't know who they are, but if you, if you didn't create them, you need to take care of them. <laughs> when I look at the story of Gomar, I think Hosea, here, here he's at a place in his relationship that he's buying her back. He's taking her back. I've never been in a... I know what it is to be, have a crush on somebody when you're 15 and they don't love you back. I know what that feels like. I know what it feels like to go somewhere and you feel like that you're not wanted. I know what that feels like. But when you when you read here in verse 17, it says you become new. Then in verse 18 it says, And all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ has given us the ministry of a reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of, of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Has God, as through God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ, stead, be ye reconciled to God. Let me tell you a story. It's a true story. There's a boy that built a boat. I've never built a boat. But he built this boat. You can buy a kid and you can build this boat. He built this boat. The boat was probably about, about this size. One day after he got it built, he took it out to the lake. And it, he, got, he got, it was all done by wind. It had no motor with it. And he puts the sails up and he kind of puts it near the lake. And he's wondering if it's even going to flood. Well, all of a sudden it starts flooding. And the wind boat starts taking off in the lake. Well, he starts running in the water trying to catch it. He can't get to it. The boat just, he watches it till he can't see it no more. So he goes home and his mom sees him walk in real depressed and she says, what's going on? Did your boat not float? He said, actually it did better than I thought it did. I've lost it. <laughs> and she said, oh no. 
He said, I'd love to have my boat. A year later, they're in town, they're walking by a store, and guess what he sees? <coughs> he sees the boat. So he runs in the store, and he says, sir, sir, that's my boat. He said, how do you know it's my boat? He said, come here, I'll show you. And he, he, he pulled the boat up to where he could show the scratches and how he had put the boat together. He said, see this mark here? I had trouble trying to get this in here to make it seal. So the old man goes, well, honey, I, you can say it's your boat, but he goes, well, I want that boat. He said, well, if you want it, you got to buy it. The little boy said, he gave him a price, and the little boy went home, mowed some grass, saved some money, comes back. He says, hey, you still have that boat? He said, yeah. He said, well, then I want to buy it. And I thought when I read that story, he created the boat. He created it. He was the first one to put it in the water to see if it flowed. He was also the first person when he walked by that store and said, wait a minute, I created it. That's my boat. But he's also the one that not only created it, See, Christ created you, yes. and he bought you. Amen. 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 How many of us today would make something, take the time to build something, knowing that you lose it and it's taken away? Later on, you got to buy it back. See, for us today, having a relationship with God, I think sometimes we forget what he paid for. Some of us today, we, we forget how valuable that we really are. Because you say, Mark, what do you mean? I go on the army bases. When I go on these military bases, the first thing, as soon as I see a military person, I, the first thing I tell them is, I want you to know, I thank you. I thank you for your service. I'll never forget this as long as I was living. I went to a Navy SEAL place in Florida. And boy, I mean, they're just putting me through the ring. I'm a little nervous. And I got two, they're not Navy SEALs, but they're next to Navy SEALs and they're standing there. This guy comes over, he said, sir, it's going to be okay. He said, we're going to escort you in. And he said, now where we're taking you, it's, you know, it is, can't take your phone, can't take no pictures. I said, okay. So we're coming back out, you know, before we go get ready to leave. I asked him, I said, man, I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from San Diego, California. He said, I have a wife and two kids out there. I said, how long have you been in service? He said, for 25 years. He said, Lord willing, I'm going to retire. I said, wow. I said, man, I thank you for your service. I said, I bet you've seen some stuff. He said, I've seen things that I'll never tell my kids about. Mm -hmm. He said, because when I go in, I don't go in to give out suppers. I'm just letting you know. That. I said, well, man, I want you to know I pray for our military all the time. I said, tell me about San Diego. He said, San Diego. He goes, I believe this is the most perfect place to live. I said, really? I thought heaven was. The guy stopped for a minute. He said, what'd you say? I said, heaven. He said, you, you know where that is? He said, you're a preacher. I said, well, <laughs> might be, might not be. He said, well, let me tell you about San Diego. He said, the temperature is about 74, 84 degrees. Barely ever rain. He said, man, I can't wait to go back. And when I left there, I left the site, unloaded, come out of there, started thinking. How many of us today, if we could get a glimpse of heaven, just a glimpse, what would my relationship then be with God? See, unfortunately, we say we're not from Missouri. But we like to see things before we believe them. Like me and Scotty said, we was talking about Punky. At the end of the day, I believe God can heal him. Until his work is done, Punky's going to be all right. Amen. We all have a job here. We all have a job that we have to do. We have no choice but. You say, Mark, you act like that me living for God is a job. It's not a job. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You see, at the end of the day, my question is, is it worth loving? As Greg comes, let me share his true story with you. I told a guy this Sunday night, I'll tell y'all, y'all are going to laugh at me afterwards, y'all give me a hard time. But I want to talk about what it is to be loved and not loved. How many here in the house of the Lord want you to lift your hand? If you're to a shepherd, you lift your hand, I understand. How many's ever had a crush on somebody that slipped up your hand? Now, Mayor, I know you had a crush on my girlfriend. <laughs> but I remember, I'll never forget this as long as I live, there was this girl who lived in the valley. And we were in, I was a sophomore in high school. And I told this guy, I said, man, I would write letters. See, we live in a society today, they don't know how to write. They text. I do not know how relationships are built on text. Do not understand it. Now they don't talk. They need help. Anyway, I said, I'd write this letter. Never forget this. I would leave it with her. I'd walk by her in the hallway. Wouldn't even look at her. Wouldn't talk to her. Wouldn't do anything. Next day, listen. I mean, it'd be like every week. I'd go by and I'd be like, okay, Jesus. I'm going to write another note. I'm going to put a bit more emphasis in the word. So I'd write this page. It's going to be about, you know, about a half a page I'd write. Debbie, she was talking last Sunday. I never did what she did. She said, I'd roll them up like a football and flip them over to them. I'd like, well, what if the wrong person gets the note? Yeah. Well, that's all I told on you. So I'll never forget, it got to almost the end of the year. And I was the you know, I'd go, to, I'd go to the store, and I didn't weigh probably 80 pounds. I remember I finally walked in, and I was like, you know, I'm just done. Well, a year and a half later, I meet Fran. <coughs> Me and Fran, we get married. A year after that, now you got to understand, I still had that in the back of my mind. A year after we got married, we run into this, this girl. She was a bad one. I'll never forget, me and Fran, we walked from where we were, and I grabbed a hold of her, and I said, thank God. She said, so that was the girl you was writing all the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was. She goes, so why are you thanking God now? I said, because I can bet. And I said, God was protecting me. <clears throat> See, sometimes in our life, we won't listen. We want to love someone. But sometimes it's not going to love us back. No matter what you do. But the one thing that will love you back is God. Amen. Amen. God's going to love you when you reject Him. Amen. Us here in this church, I'm going to go ahead and say it pretty boldly. Church people, huh, let somebody reject you and get rude with you. Yeah, don't tell me none of that stuff. Why? Because the first thing we do is if they don't want to be with me, that's fine. So let me tell you something. We today, we have an opportunity. I want every eye closed in this house. I'm going to give you this opportunity. If you're here today and you say, Mark, I have never, ever been in a relationship with God. Let me share something with you. You may not know this, but God loves you. Before you came out of your mother's womb, he already knew what your name was going to be. Amen. When you grew as a teenager, God already knew, hey, I'm going to put a few people in your life. Then, you get those people in your life and God still protected your family. But you say, Mark, I don't have a relationship. Let me go ahead and tell you, God loves you. He loves you more today than he did yesterday. Yeah. He loves you every day. His love gets stronger. And you may be here this morning and you say, well, Mark, what does that the boat have to do with this message? Well, you were the boat. He created you. He was the first one to put you in the water for you to sail. Then, 
When you were lost, he found you. He said, okay, for me to have my faith, my creation back, I'm going to send my son. So he, he bought you with the price of his son. See, this morning, you have an opportunity to ask God to come into your life today. You have an opportunity to say, God, I want my home, I want my life, I want my work, I want my family to be in the will of God. And see, that's hard. Because what happens is you have to get up out of your pew where you are and you have to walk to an altar. And all these people, they look at you. But guess what? It goes back to what I said earlier. What you love, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. See, when I dated Fran, it didn't matter. If they could have told me Fran was a serial killer, I'd have been like, well, well she don't kill me, I'm good. But folks, God loves you. And this morning, you may be here this morning, you say, Mark, in my relationship with God, I've been struggling. Mark, I've not been reading, I've not been praying. Mark, my family is in chaos. Hey, God can fix it. God can fix anything. So this morning, as every eye is closed in this place this morning, here's what I want you to do. Before you stand this morning, I want you to grab the person's hand next to you. Before you stand. Do you feel that touch? You can feel that person's hand in your hand. This morning, I really believe this in my heart. That when I ask you to stand here in a moment, Greg and Robin, they're going to sing. Scott's up here, he's going to play. This morning, when you let go of that person's hand next to you, if you really want to see a change in your life, if you just move one step, you'll feel somebody else grab that hand. It'll be the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it'll walk you down here. And for the first time in your life, you're going to say, I got a peace. This morning, don't let the enemy have your family. Don't let the enemy steal your joy. And if you're lost, give God a chance. Give him one chance. Let somebody love you like you ain't never been loved before. Because as many times as you have rejected him, he still loves you. As you stand this morning, they begin to sing the song for I can't tell you the heart that's broken. Make it all.
But God, your son, when he done it, he done it so willingly. Because God, he wanted your will to be done. And God, because of that price, today, we as believers today, who are in a relationship with God, God, today, we have a tomorrow. This morning, for the folks that are now down here praying this morning, I want to pray that God, whatever's on them, that God you remove it. That God, that your fingerprint be upon their life. That God, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I pray this morning, God, believing and knowing that God today, Lord, we in our own lives, God, I pray today that, Lord, that you will restore what is broken, God. And that, God, where there's encouragement or where there's courage that needs to be in their life, God, I want you to put a hedge around them. That, God, that, Lord, that when they leave here today, God, this week, for the next week, God, and the weeks after, that, God, they're going to be reminded, my God loves me. He created me. So this morning, God, I ask that your will be done in the house. Your will be done in the house. God, I pray on the family. I pray on these family. And in the name of Jesus. Tuesday, 
Uh, I don't know what time Fran will be up here. But, uh, we don't have to worry about it since Bobby's fixed it. He always tore down the light, the power going by the light. We tell him to turn around, he wouldn't turn around. But, uh, so uh, we just ask that. Uh, just remember that on Tuesday. Remember Wednesday. Uh, so me and Fran, we, we, we love you guys very much. I'm thankful for Kenny and Nellie being here today. Uh, Kenny's a really good man. I give him a really, even though Nellie just laughed right then. Uh, uh, well, it's just that when you're not here, he talks such trash about you. <laughs> really? You want me to record no. that? You want me to record that? Uh, I got a report as soon as they left the church. And uh, I said, yeah, I know. He's giving me a hard time. Uh, no, I, I really do thank Kenny. Kenny's a big asset. I've known Kenny all my life. He knows me all my life, so if he ever tells stories, I will get him. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'll make sure you let Kenny how much you know. You'd be glad to see him today. Make sure you let other people know you were glad to see him. So if you're staying for the torn mate, I need you to stay. Please stay. We'll go downstairs. I don't know who will be here. What about your special offering you were going to take up? Uh, we're going to do that next Sunday. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, or we can do it. Well, we can do it today. Um, David. David's going to place a bucket back there. Uh, David's going to put this. He's going to put this trash can back here at the back. We are taking up a donation for the family. Just put it there. Right there through the door, just open them doors and sit right there. This is for a family that uh, we, this family just needs, just needs some help, and uh, they're an awesome family, and uh, if they knew I was doing this, I would be crucified today. But they got no nails, so I'm good. Uh, so I want you all just to give from your heart. If you got a dollar to give, that's fine. Uh, for a family, so remember that. Last but not least, I want you to look at somebody today <clears throat> before you leave. And I want you to give them a hug, and after you give them a hug, I want you to tell them, you are the most awesome person I've ever met. <laughs> I see Mike back there looking at <laughs>